What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. As always, my name is Sean Noriega, head coach at Nori Powerlifting, and today is the second episode of the Bench Press series where the topic of discussion is going to be breathing. Now, I'm sure many of you watching this are deep in the powerlifting game or maybe have just gotten into barbell sports in general. But at some point in your lifting career, you probably didn't pay much mind to breathing. You would just get under the bar and go. But at some point in your lifting career, you probably read something, watched a video, or spoke to people more experienced than you and found out breathing was actually more important than you thought. And you probably learned of a term called bracing. And while there's some slight variation in how people breathe and brace, the general consensus is that it's the process of filling up with as much air as you can and then bearing down. Now, there's extensive studies to suggest that bracing is actually going to increase your performance on lifts because there's an increase in intra-abdominal pressure for trunk stability and it allows you to produce more force. There's also research to suggest that wearing a belt is going to increase the ability to lift more weight. And I'm sure many of you who have been lifting for a while know that you do lift more weight with a belt. And this is a function of actually having something to brace against, so you're able to create more intra-abdominal pressure and get more trunk stability. But today's topic, of course, is the bench press. And the thing that I want to explore is, is all bracing created equal? Should we be bracing the same way on bench press as we do on squats and deadlifts? And in the same way that we expect an advantage on the squat and deadlift by wearing a belt, should all of us expect to get that same advantage by wearing a belt on bench press? So the questions that we're going to explore today are, how are we actually supposed to brace on bench press? And when is it right for you to wear a belt on bench press? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head to the gym now, and I'm going to talk to you guys in detail about these topics. So we've discussed why bracing is important. And I think to really dig into whether or not all bracing is created equal for all three competition lifts, we need to talk about what the brace is accomplishing and how it's allowing us to lift more weight. So when we squat and deadlift, when we're bracing, we're thinking about creating this stacked orientation of the head over the ribs over the pelvis. And then from there, we're inhaling and creating intra-abdominal pressure via the airflow. And then we're kind of bearing down to create that trunk stability and maintain that neutral position or as close to neutral and not a dynamic movement so that we can control the weight, whether it's on our back or we're trying to break the floor with it on a deadlift. Now we have to think, does this strategy make the most sense for a bench press when we're thinking about what we need to accomplish when we're bench pressing for powerlifting. So if we dig into the powerlifting bench press, what are we trying to do? We're trying to create as much of a stable arch as we can. We're trying to drive the rib cage up to the bar. We're trying to minimize the range of motion. We're trying to move more weight. So when we think about what we're doing when we brace on a squat or a deadlift, we're trying to bring ourselves into a neutral position. We rotate the rib cage down. We maintain a pelvis that is underneath us. And that is contradictory to setting up a powerlifting arch. So would we really want to brace in the exact same manner, flexing the abs, bearing them down? Probably not. So what do we want to do? Well, when we're bench pressing, like we mentioned, we want to create that compression on the backside, squeeze the upper back together, drive the ribs up to the bar. So we're doing something that is very different from that typical squat and deadlift bracing pattern. What we're going to try to do and I'll show you in a demonstration now, is that we're gonna to try to create as much extension in the thoracic and lumbar regions of the back. We're going to try to pinch those shoulder blades down and back, so think about retraction and depression. When we take our breath now, it's going to be a much more distended breath and keep it anterior. So instead of trying to inflate 360 degrees around and bear down, we're gonna think about really filling up in the front and taking more of a belly breath and pushing it out. Then from there, we're trying to actively extend and drive the rib cage up to the bar. And whether you have a massive arch or you just have a more moderate one, this is always going to be the intent, right? You're going to try to create as much compression on the backside to get a stable touching point. You're going to try to reduce the range of motion and you're going to inhale up to the bar. That's always going to be the goal to move more weight. We want to have a stable backside and we want to reduce the range of motion as much as we can given our circumstances. So ultimately, it doesn't make much sense to brace the same way on a bench press as we would on the squat and deadlift. So one of my favorite cues that I implement with my lifters that I think really makes this concept of bracing more concrete in their minds, I get from the movie Hitch. So I'm gonna show you guys a clip from the movie right now and maybe you'll understand after watching it. See, this is what most guys do, they rush in to take the kiss. But you're not most guys. 
See, the secret to a kiss is to go 90% of the way and then hold. it takes for her to come the other ten. Now show me the magic, Albert. Show me the magic. What the hell was that? I'm showing you the magic. I... No, I said come 90 and then I come 10. You don't go the whole 100. My mouth was open, Albert. Oh, you over eager son of a... So what I tell my lifters is to abide by the 90-10 rule. And obviously this isn't going to be something that you can actually do in the literal sense, but the intent should always be to let the bar travel 90% and you meet it the other 10% through that active attempt to extend the back, to pinch the scaps together, and to reach and extend that rib cage up to the barbell. Now, this is antithetical to the style of bracing that we want to implement on a squat and a deadlift where we're trying to maintain a more neutral spine, where we're trying to maintain a rib cage that is more stacked over the pelvis. So ultimately, the concept of using your abs to brace is not really going to be an effective one here. Now sure, it is quote unquote the, the proper way to brace, but the task here dictates that we need to shorten the range of motion and create as much tension on the backside. So I'm not thinking about abs here. I'm not thinking about bearing down after taking an air. I'm thinking about distending up to the bar because that's going to allow me to reduce that range of motion, to pinch the scaps together, to expand the rib cage up, to abide by that 90-10 rule. So when you're thinking about bracing on bench press, or just bracing in general, you need to understand what the task is that you're trying to do. And unlike the squat and deadlift, the neutrality aspect is not our best friend here. So on bench press, extend, pinch, distend the stomach, fill up with air anteriorly, reduce that range of motion, and bench more weight. So let's take things a step further. We've talked about how bracing is going to enhance the quality of your squat and your deadlift, and we've talked about how a belt is going to enhance the quality of your brace. Naturally, most powerlifters have learned that a belt is going to enhance their ability to squat more weight and deadlift more weight. And I think that it follows in their mind that, okay, I wear a belt for squat and deadlift, why shouldn't I wear one for bench? And you see a lot of lifters out there who do wear a belt for bench. But let's really talk about what a belt is going to do. A belt is going to allow us to create more intra-abdominal pressure, but because there is a piece of material there that is restrictive, it's going to promote that neutrality and keep us in that neutral position a lot better. So when we think back to what we just talked about on the bench press in that we're trying to create an arch, and even again, if you don't have a big one, you're still trying to create some semblance of an arch, let's think about what the belt does. The belt is going to pull us back into a more neutral position. So I see a ton of lifters out there who are always wearing belts when they bench press while trying to create a massive arch and oftentimes, those two strategies are going to be contradictory to each other. And in some circumstances, it might not make sense to wear a belt when you bench press. You might actively be reducing the quality of your arch because the belt is just going to naturally want to pull you back into a more neutral spine position. But of course, there's not going to be a one size fits all for whether or not a belt is the best option. So what I want to do is I want to take this moment to talk about the circumstances in which it does make sense to wear a belt and the circumstances in which it might not make sense to wear the belt. And the first point that I'm going to talk about is weight class and body fat percentage. So I see a ton of lifters out there, particularly smaller lifters, wearing belts that I don't think necessarily need one. And the reason for this is we can talk about how a belt actually enhances your bench press. And I think one of the ways that it could enhance your bench press is if you don't have a massive arch or you have enough mass around your midsection that when you wear a belt and brace, it creates the pressure that launches that tissue, right? Your stomach fat, your, your actual body mass up to the bar, right? It creates this, this higher positioning of the stomach. It's higher pressure. So for some heavier lifters, this might increase the stability at the chest by wearing a belt. But if you're a smaller lifter, if you're somebody like me who's an 83, you're fairly lean, you're a fairly small lifter, when you wear a belt and you brace against it, you don't have a lot of mass around that belt so that even if you take a breath in, you're not really getting that full advantage of having any sort of tissue be expanding up to the bar. Most of the time when I see skinnier lifters wearing belts, all you see really is this space between the belt and their stomach when they arch, and it's just their rib cage going up. And if that's the case, 
they probably don't really need to be wearing that belt. And in fact, it's probably hurting their ability to arch on the bench press. So one of the big factors is going to be body weight, body fat percentage. And I think that some heavier lifters might benefit from wearing one, but the smaller lifters, it's usually the case that they don't. Another point that we can talk about that is somewhat correlated to body fat percentage and body weight is whether you soft touch or you sink. And I think going along with that concept of creating pressure, you see a lot of heavier weight lifters use the sinking method on bench press where they allow the bar to depress their tissue, their stomach fat, their chest, when the bar touches their chest. And there are a lot of lifters who implement a soft touch, like I do, where you just get the bar to the chest and you try to control it at the surface. Now, it might benefit you to be wearing a belt on bench press if you are a sink bench presser. Because like I just mentioned before, especially if you're a heavier lifter, when you take that breath into the belt, that tissue surrounding the belt is going to expand up to the bar, it's going to be higher pressure, and ultimately if you're sinking, you want to have as much pressure at that touching point because that's going to allow you to maintain more control and probably have more pressing power off the chest, which is ultimately the hope, you know, the hopeful expectation from implementing such a strategy. So that's another factor to consider. If you soft touch, and especially if you're a lighter lifter who soft touches, you probably don't need it. Even if you're a heavier lifter trying to create as much of an arch as you can, you might not need the belt, but I think that it is appropriate in many cases where if you are a heavier lifter and you, saw, or you sink the bar, that a belt might actually benefit you. So as you guys can probably tell by now, a lot of these factors are interrelated. And the last point that we're going to get into is what is the severity of your arch? Because we talked about at the beginning of this segment that if you do have an extreme arch and are trying to create as much of an arch as possible and the strategy that you implement to add weight to the bar is reducing range of motion, then the belt is going to be counterproductive because it is going to add some range of motion and take some inches off of that arch. Whereas if you are a lifter who does not have a substantial arch, there are some circumstances in which wearing the belt might benefit you. Right? Because if we think about percentage of range of motion here, if we have a massive arch and we wear a belt that might try its best to bring us back to neutral, we might end up adding an inch to our range of motion, which for some extreme archers might end up being 10, 15% addition to their range of motion, which is going to have a negative impact on their ability to bench, especially since most people with large arches are also going to use a soft touch. So that pressure factor doesn't play as much of a role. Now, if you have a really large range of motion, think of Alexander Nathan or Chesnificent who have incredible bench presses and very long ranges of motion, perhaps the benefit that they get from that increased pressure buildup in the stomach from wearing a belt, that might outweigh whatever additional range of motion the belt leads to because as a percentage of their total range of motion, it's totally insignificant. So there you have it, folks. Some of the strategies that you might be implementing on the squat and deadlift in order to be as efficient as possible and move the most weight simply might not be as advantageous on the bench press. In addition, whether or not you wear a belt is not just a function of can I feel myself bracing against one harder. There are a lot of physiological and technical aspects that determine whether or not it's the right choice for you. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you found it helpful. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Remember, there are no bad days, and I will see all of you in the next video. Take care.